there were so many things uh, uh, that I was thinking of before the idea of telenovela uh, came to mind, but I was a very uh, big fan of uh, telenovelas growing up. I was in a soap opera uh, in my career. One of the first breaks I got was Young and the Restless. Uh, and I loved uh, behind the scenes comedies like Soap Dish and um, 30 Rock and Soap in the 70s with um, Billy Crystal. I mean, there was all uh, Tootsie. There were so many funny things that were happening behind the scenes, way funnier than what was happening in front of the cameras. And so I always thought, oh, it would be funny to have a TV series where, um, it was behind the scenes of a, of a soap opera, but instead of a normal soap opera, what if it was a telenovela? Which is, uh, you know, I think raises the stakes because they're more melodramatic and they're heightened and it's the most popular genre in the world. And so we wanted to, to celebrate it and this was like our big love letter to, to telenovelas. A lot of soap opera tropes we uh, uh, we definitely uh, uh, bring out, whether it's a wind machine or a stare down or slapping. Um, but so many uh, of our writers and our actors have been on novelas, and so a lot of the stories we get are real life things that have happened. Uh, you know, there was a, a soap actress who would. Um, a telenovela actress who would uh, randomly slap people in scenes. You never knew if you were going to get slapped. Um, there's another woman who would get up on ladders and move her own lights. Um, another so a telenovela actress whose assistant was poisoning her in real life. So yeah, it was uh, yeah we we just kind of go oh let's just pull from this real world of novelas. Um, but it's been so fun and so well received. It is a workplace comedy at the heart of it. And you know, these characters could be in a dentist office and it would still be super funny and super relevant and super relatable. Desperate Housewives was a dramedy, and so when I got to do comedy, people loved it. Um, but I didn't get to do it a lot, and so this is the first time I'm in a true half-hour sitcom comedy, and I get to spread my comedic wings and go for the joke and and be big and broad and and of course physical. I love physical comedy, and when I read this script, I thought, oh my gosh, I love. I love Anna Sophia. I love where her comedy comes from, which is um, her insecurities um, and her desperation to to want to be more, do more, uh, and be relevant. And so uh, it was a lot of fun, kind of flexing my my comedy muscles. It is it is uh, phys literally muscles. Every week I was hurt. Like <laughs> I fell off the bed. I tweaked my shoulder. I banged my knee. Um, falling off a piano. I mean, it, it, it was uh, it was a lot of fun though because it's um, a side people kind of saw a little bit of and liked, and now they get to see a lot of. It's a different beast, but you, yeah, co comedy is all about timing and all about the rhythm of the words and the pace of the editing and the pace of, of um, the camera choreography. So that's why I wanted to produce the show that I was going to be in. And that's why I like producing comedies because uh, it's not just in the, it's not just up to the actor to make it funny. It's it, the, the music can cue a joke. Um, you know, the way we edit it uh, also lends itself to uh, making it funnier or not as funny. And so I needed to have my hands in, in all aspects of, of the final product. And so for comedy, I think specifically, that's very important. Even when we're on set and, and I'm directing actors or talking actors, I'm like, no, 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 it's da da da. You know, that line, that, that there's a rhythm to comedy that you have to. You have to get, you know, don't move on the joke. Land, say the joke and then move, you know, and so, um, so, so many things that make a comedy a comedy. Oh my gosh, I love everything about Anna Sophia. I, you know what I love is she's exact opposite of Gabby, um, Gabby Solis from Housewives. Gabby was narcissistic and confident and uh, egotistical. Uh, and Anna's the other side. She's super insecure. She's super fragile. She needs her friends. She hides behind Mimi. Um, she gets herself into trouble, doesn't know how to crawl out of it. Uh, and that's been so much fun to play, like just something totally different, unexpected. Um, I also, you know, I like that she's a fish out of water in this world, which kind of comes from my upbringing. I, I grew up in Texas not speaking Spanish but yet being Latina so kind of never getting the joke or not really quite fitting in and having one foot in and one foot out and I feel like the future generations of Hispanics in the United States feel that way. They feel that you know I'm not as tied to my language or culture as as other generations and so but I still feel 
Latino. I still feel Mexican. I still feel, you know, connected to my culture. So uh, when we did focus groups of the of the pilot, that was one of the number one things Hispanics said was, I love that Ana Sofia doesn't speak Spanish because that, I don't speak Spanish, but yet I am Hispanic and I'm very proud of it. And so it was uh, interesting to see that that was uh, a through line in other people's lives. What my foundation does is really focus on, on two paths for women, the first being their educational journey, the second being uh, entrepreneurial programs, because Latinas start small businesses at six times the national average, and so they don't have access to capital, they don't have access to business training, so we want to uh, kind of nurture that. But prior to that, um, just getting them out of high school is a challenge. You know, uh, Latinos in the United States are, um, we have the, the largest, um, uh, the least access to higher education, the least access to resources. We, you know, the disparity in Hispanic education is so great that we have so much ground to make up. And that's why uh, my foundation wants to focus on not only the Latino community, but specifically on women in the Latino community who are, are multiplying uh, factors. If you help a woman, she'll help her family. Um, and so for, for me, it was very important to go back, get my master's degree, and be the example that I want to see in young women. Um, and so whether I do it through the media or TV or acting or producing or directing or my philanthropy, I just want um, young girls to, to see what they can be. Oh my God, I had amazing, I didn't grow up with celebrities. Um, I grew up with an amazing family of women. My mother's uh, super strong. I have nine aunts, I have three sisters. So uh, I was really surrounded by uh, amazing women who were educated, who had uh, careers, not a job, but they had careers, they had families. Um, I was the last person in my family to get a master's degree. So uh, <laughs> a lot of overachievers in my family. Oh my gosh, we have so many on our slate right now. Um, I never like to say them because everything gets stuck in development and then people go, what happened to that one? But um, yeah, we have six projects in development right now on our production slate, three comedies, three dramas. Um, you know, some are Latino themed, some are not. But, uh, you know, hopefully with the, with the large amount of different distribution channels now, um, you will see more content uh, uh, distributed from my uh, production company because I, I just feel like, you know, I'm championing uh, female leads, I'm championing the Latino community, and I'm championing funny. Like, I just want to make really good content.